Hey, what up guys? Today we're going to be doing this Fortnite effect inspired by the new Travis Scott video, The Scots. In Blender, so try to do your best to follow along. So the first thing we're going to do is delete everything. So press A to select everything, X to delete everything. Then shift A and go to UV sphere. Right click and shade smooth. Now we're gonna get a planet texture online. So go to www.textures.com. So type in planet and we're gonna be using this texture right here. So go down and you can download it for free. So once you have that downloaded and saved, go to the shading tab, click new, go to the base color and go to image texture. Now we're just gonna import our image texture wherever you saved it. Click open image. So it looks pretty good. Shader editor. Click N to escape that. Click Shift A, search, type in bump, and connect the normal to the principal BSDF normal. Now we're also going to bring in a noise texture. So Shift A, search, and type in noise texture. And connect the factor to the height. Then just bring up the detail and bring down the scale and the bump strength. We can also bring down the roughness a little bit. Now we're gonna go get our character. So type in mixamo.com and here you can download a free character. So first choose your character. We're gonna be using this racer character here. Click animations and type in sitting and then choose whatever animation you want your racer character to have or whatever character you chose. Just click download, click on 24 frames and format is gonna be FBX. And then just click download and save it to wherever, whatever folder. We're gonna go to file, import FBX, and then go to wherever you saved your character. Just click import FBX. And then there he is. We're gonna make him sit on top of our planet here. We, you can go to the settings and control it from there. You can also scale him a bit by pressing S. So once he's positioned correctly, the way you want, just name the sphere planet. It's good to stay organized. So the next thing we're gonna do is click Shift A, go to mesh and then import in a plane. After that, you can just hide all this stuff, so just Hide it for now and click shift A and import in a cube. This is going to be our asteroid. So go to the modifiers tab, go to subdivision surface, and then just increase the viewport and render. Then go add in a displace modifier. Click new and set the texture coordinate to global. And then click on that and then go change it to Voronoi. And then just mess with the settings to make it look like an asteroid, kind of like a rock, rock figure by messing with the intensity and size. Also shade smooth it. Go back and mess with the strength of the display modifier and the mid level. Go to the shader editor, click N to close out of that tab. Click new and then we're gonna shade it. Change the base color. Click shift A, add in a bump. Noise texture as well. Connect the factor to the height. Bring the detail up and then just bring this uh, the strength down, uh, sorry, the scale down on the noise texture and the bump strength down. Once you're done with that, we're gonna duplicate them. And since the texture coordinate is set to global, if you move it around, it automatically changes the rock shape. Uh, just click Shift D and then duplicate a bunch of them. Then just click B and then box select all of them. And then click Shift M, new collection, and then just call it Asteroid Collection. Then click G and then Y, and then move it out of the viewport somewhere far away where we can't see it and then bring bring the plane into the other collection and then bring back everything by hitting the eyeball over there make everything visible again and then click on the plane and click on the meter tab click the plus icon change it to hair go to the render 
settings, change it to collection, click on the asteroid collection, and then we have our asteroids there. Change the scale randomness to one. Bring the size of the plane up by clicking S and then eight. And then just mess around with the scale settings under the render tab. And you can add in more asteroids by changing the emission number. I'm gonna add in about 3000. Go to the shader, click on the plane, go to the shader tab, click new. Connect the principal BSDF to the volume and then it should be invisible and you should only see the asteroids. Okay, next we're gonna be adding in the fog. So to do that, just click Shift A, add in a cube and then go to the shader editor and click new. Delete the principal BSDF, click Shift A and then add in principal volume. Connect the volume to the volume, add in an RGB to BW. Connect the volume to the density, and then we're gonna add in a color ramp. So shift A, color ramp, and then connect the color to the color of the RGB to BW. And then we're also gonna add in a Voronoi. Connect the distance to the factor. And now you can control the fog using the color ramp. Before we do that, we need to make the fog a little bigger. Just click S and then eight to make it bigger. And then go to the transform settings and Decrease the C scale to flatten it out. And reposition it and then click S to make it bigger again. And then S and Z to flatten it a little more. And there you go, you have your fog. Next we're going to add in the little planets around our character. So click Shift A, go to Curve, Circle. Then click G and Z to bring it up. Click seven to go to top view and position it so it's in the middle of our character. So click Shift A, add in a UV sphere, position it to where you want, S to rescale it. And then we're also gonna add in a point light. Position the point light so it's in between the UV sphere and our character. So click the UV sphere, go on the shader editor, click new go on surface and then emission and then change the color to a light blue and change the strength to 10 then click on the light again the point light and we're going to change the color of the point light so you can use the eyedropper to click the little planet to match the color and change the strength to about 500 now click on the point light and then click the little planet click ctrl p to parent it to object so now they're connected, so if you move the little planet, the light will move along with it. So now just click your little planet, go on to constraints, and then follow path. And then choose the Bezier circle. And now just reposition it. Then you can control the position using the offset. Now shift D to duplicate the planet. Click that. Number two there, it's so it's not connected to the original planet. And now you can change the color of your planet to purple. And use the offset to reposition it. Repeat this step to add a third planet along with another light. Now we're going to add in our camera. So click Shift A, select camera. Click Shift plus this little dot thing. And now you can control the camera using your keyboard. I'm using WSAD to control the movement. Position your camera to where you want it. Then go to then go to frame zero and then go to the transform settings. Click I on the location and rotation. And then click shift and then right arrow to go to the last frame. And then position your camera to where you want it to end. Click I and I again on the location and rotation. You can also change the focal length of the camera. I'm going to change it to a little wider angle. Next, we're going to animate the planet movements around our character. So click one of the planets, go on the constraints, go on the offset. You can click right click and then insert keyframe. And then go to the end frame and then just bring it around to whatever direction you want it to go. And then right click and then insert keyframe again or you can click I and then do that for the other planets as well. 
So now our planets are orbiting around our character. Next, we're going to do the lighting. So add in an area light and position it so it's pointing at our character. Now we're going to add some stars to our background. So let's go to the shader editor, go to the world settings, and then click shift A and add environment texture and connect that to the background. There's a link in the description below to download the same background that I'm using. You can download it and then save it. And then we're going to open it up. And now we have our background. And then we're also going to add another we're going to add a sun way at the back. So click Shift A, add a UV sphere, and then position it way at the back. You can press uh, number pad zero to go back to the camera view. And go to the shader tab, and then change it to emission. Change the color to yellow, and change the strength to about 10. We're also going to add a point light in front of that sun. So make sure your sun and light is above the fog here and if you can't see your fog just go to the render settings and make sure your render setting is EV. Turn on ambient occlusion, bloom, screen space reflections, volume metrics and then turn on volumetric shadows and turn your tile size to 4. Also go to uh, shadows and turn on high bandwidth. I recommend doing this at the end just because it's very taxing on your computer. But if you just want to see how your project is looking, you can turn on all those settings and then just click F12 to see a quick picture of how your scene is looking. Fog is a bit too much, so we're going to click the fog and we're going to go back to the shader editor and we are going to make the fog less dense by using the color ramp here. Now, if you want to customize your character a bit, you can click your character, go on texture paint, and you can paint on something cool on your character. So I'm going to paint something on his helmet. Now let's see how it looks so far. Now finally, when you're done, to render it out, just go to the render settings, go to file format, Switch it to FFmpeg video, click on where you want to save it, and then go on encoding, switch it to MP4, MPEG4, and switch the quality to high quality. And then just go on render, and then render animation. If you guys have any questions or issues, um, be sure to leave a comment and I will definitely answer it if I can. Leave a like if you found this tutorial to be helpful and subscribe for more future tutorials. I'm going to be making a lot more Blender tutorials in the future, so I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye.